All right, so this video tutorial is going to deal with transforming the cubic function by applying all the transformations that I've been talking about in my video series so far. Now remember, it's always a good idea to start with your base graph of your function. In this case, it, the base graph happens to be a cubic, and you can see that based on my, my exponent of 3 here. Okay, so I've started with my base graph. It's always a good idea to remove the greatest common factor between your two terms, right? You want to get rid of that coefficient in front of x, otherwise you're going to skew your translation, which is bad news. Okay, so I've taken out a 2, uh, and you can see that I end up with this expression here. Okay, so now we're ready to analyze our, our function. Just sort of reading from, from left to right, you can see the first thing that you see is that you've got a negative in front of your function. That tells you that you're going to be reflecting your function over the x-axis. The next thing you see, you've got a horizontal compression by a factor of 2. So what we're going to be doing is reflecting this graph over the x-axis, and we're going to sort of compress it and make it thinner. And what I've done is I've, I've already compressed the graph for you, and you can see that each of these points is sort of half as far away as it was originally. Right? I've divided each of the x values by 2. So that's my horizontal compression. I'm next going to show you how to reflect it over the x-axis. Using this program, I can just sort of right-click and hit flip. Uh, you obviously won't have that luxury if you're doing it on a, on a piece of paper, but you can sort of just take each of those points and just reflect it below the, the x-axis. So this, this value was at 8 originally. Once I perform that reflection, you can see that it's at negative 8 down here. Okay, that's my reflection over the x-axis. So I've taken care of my first two transformations. The last transformation is just simply to move my function to the left by three units. And remember, if you didn't factor out that two, you would have assumed that you're moving to the left by six units, and that is just quite simply not true. So I'm gonna move this to the left by three units. So one, two, three, and you can see all of the points come with it when I move that, that function. And as usual, I wanna just sort of label my function. It's always just a good idea just to give whoever's looking at your work an idea of, of what they're looking at. You can see I started with f at x equals x cubed, and I've ended up with this new transform function called r at x. That's what I end up with when I apply all of those transformations.